me to spray? Bethlehem United Methodist Church. It is a joy to worship with each of you this morning. I am Reverend Corey Alexander Ouellette, and it is my joy to be the pastor here at St. B. Joining me in worship leadership this morning is Margaret Fisher on the piano, and joining me in worship leadership this morning is all of you. Whether this is your first time or you have been coming for years, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, whether you are worshiping in person or joining us online. No matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, 
No matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Holiness is the beauty of God's temple while time shall last. We worship God in the sanctity. I invite you now to join me as together we say our mission statement. Growing disciples of Christ for the transformation of our community. I want to direct your attention now to the back of our bulletin where you will find our announcements. As I knock things out of the pulpit. <laughs> this afternoon, UMW will be meet, having their unit meeting at 2 p.m. in Heritage Hall Please bring your thank offering. This week, Bible study will not be meeting as Thursday is Thanksgiving. I just almost said Halloween if you have any idea how my brain is coping with the time that is passing this year. We will resume Bible study next week on December 1st, and we will start our, Advents, our Advent study. We will be looking at scripture and looking at images and diving into the ways in which both reveal to us about who God is. And so I hope you will join us on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. in Heritage Hall. This Saturday at 10 a.m., we will be decorating the church for Advent because one week from today is the first Sunday of Advent. And so you are all invited to come and help us decorate the church as we begin this Advent season. Speaking of Advent, you will notice that you have a poinsettia insert. If you would like to purchase a poinsettia in memory or in honor of someone, these, are, these and the money are due back to the office on December 1st. If you have any questions, please reach out to the office. Finally, I have a sadder announcement to share with you this morning. Uh, I am sad to share that Ashley's last day as the St. V Administrative Assistant and Financial Secretary was this past Friday, November 19th. We give thanks for her gifts and all that she has done for St. V over the last eight or nine years during her tenure here. As we navigate through this transition, we do so with an abundance of grace. We are looking for volunteers to assist in answering the phones Monday through Thursday from 9 to noon. So if you are interested in doing that, please let me or Margaret know, um, and we will give you all the training that you need. This will be in place as the Staff Parish Relations Committee discerns the next best steps. Are there any other announcements this morning? Seeing none, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 131, We Gather Together.
remain standing as we affirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. to the truth. Mobilize us. Give us the nerve to continuously take up the project of liberation like Christ the King. Give us the courage to eagerly respond to your call to advocate for justice and peace in our communities so that the oppressed will be set free. It is because of the Spirit that gives each one the sustenance needed to do this hard work, we pray. Amen. We have a special surprise this morning. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is Roger Bray, lives up uh, real close to Cincinnati right now, and um, he's going to join us. I've got the black mic, Mary. Okay. And I don't even know if I even say it. Okay. Fix that mic. <laughs> there you go.
Typically on this Sunday of the year, when I would have a children's sermon, I would invite the kids down, and they would all be seated, and we'd all be kind of quiet, and then I would just yell at them, Happy New Year! And then I would get many blank faces like I'm getting right now, because it's November, and it being the new year makes no sense at all. <laughs> However, it is the new year. Today is the last Sunday of our liturgical calendar. And on this last Sunday of the liturgical year, we celebrate the reign of Christ. We celebrate Christ as King. And I think that it's so appropriate that we start off our busiest season of the year in the church, in our homes, with the reminder that Christ is King. And I think that it's appropriate that remembering this comes at the end of the year and not the beginning. You see, next Sunday, we begin Advent. We begin the period of waiting for the infant Christ to be born. We celebrate Christ as King. We celebrate the reign of Christ at the end of the liturgical year because we first must recognize Christ as vulnerable infant. We then move into the Lenten season and Easter when we see his trial and death and resurrection. We see his great works of mercy. Yes, Christ is king. And Christ is servant to the least and the lost. We confess the power of Jesus Christ in our own personal lives, in the society and community in which we live, in the world, and in the coming kingdom of God. And to confess the lordship of Christ, to confess that Christ is king, is to commit to the teachings of Jesus and reflect his light in all that we do. 
The Nicene Creed is a creed that was written in the 300s. And it emphasizes the divine and holy natures of Christ, which is what gives Christ authority in our lives. And it says, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Light from light, true God from true God. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Throughout this liturgical year, we have been, all of the gospel readings on the lectionary have come from the gospel of Mark. And the author of Mark emphasizes the authority of Christ. He has the authority to cast out demons, calm storms, heal the sick, and raise the dead. The Lord Jesus Christ still claims that authority for us today. And there is great power when we are able to recognize that authority. Confessing the power of Jesus Christ in our personal lives is to align ourselves in accordance with the teachings of Christ. Jesus is light from light. And we are called to share that light in the world. And in order to align our lives in accordance with the teachings of Christ, we have to look deeply into Scripture. In Scripture, we see Jesus deeply committed to love all people. In John 13, he says, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you, you should love one another. It is through Jesus' deep love for us that we are able to love ourselves and one another and profess Christ the King. In our verses today, we almost stop short of the most important question we find. Emily kind of jumped the gun on my big reveal at the end. <laughs> Jesus says, you say that I am king, for, I was for this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate immediately responds to the question, with the question, what is and if you think that's an easy question to answer, I invite you to talk to anyone who is in my Bible study on Wednesday night. I'm not sure if they're still upset with me for making them answer that question or not, but <laughs> what is truth? I have been wrestling with this question of what is truth for about a month now as I was finishing my, ordained, my ordination papers a few weeks ago. Because truth is a tricky business. I think about what truth means, and I want to share this story about absolute truth. There's a group of children, and one says, I have the best dad in the whole world. And another responds, no you don't. I have the best dad in the whole world. And a third child responds, well, that can't be true, because I, in fact, have the best dad in the world. Are any of these children wrong about their father being the best father in the world? Of course not. As Christians, we profess the lordship of Christ. We profess the saving work of Christ for the world through his life, death, and resurrection. We proclaim the ways that Christ has grounded us in our identity as beloved children of God. So that each of us might say, my creator is the best creator.
We also confess the power of Jesus Christ in our society and in our world. And when we do so, we are challenging existing structures that perpetuate oppression and mar marginalization. By confessing the power of Christ in our society and our world, we are challenging the existing structures that Jesus himself challenged. We are called to confront systems of oppression and spread the kingdom of God. Through confessing the power of Jesus Christ to our societies and the world, we are displaying our belief that Christ has called us to be better and live according to his example. On Communion Sundays, we proclaim together, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Affirming that Jesus Christ is Lord is a past, present, and future claim. We believe that Jesus is going to return and bring to fruition the kingdom of God. Christ died for our sins so that we could begin the work of bringing the kingdom of God to earth until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet forever. When we claim Jesus Christ as Lord, we are committing to upholding the teachings and life of Christ and strive to live as Jesus has called us to live. When we claim Jesus Christ as Lord, we are committing to, the, to always seeking the truth that Christ has proclaimed. This task is not an easy one. However, it is the most important task we will ever attempt. And it is not one that we do on our own. This morning, I want to close by reading an adaptation of the prologue to John, John chapter 1, written by Alexander Shia in his book, Heart and Mind, The Four Gospel Journey for Radical Transformation. In every beginning is the Christ, and the Christ is with God, and the Christ is God. The Christ is in the beginning with God. All things come into being through the Christ, and without the Christ, not one thing comes into being. What comes into being in the Christ is life, and that life is the radiance of all people, of all creation. The radiance shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. The Christ is in the world, and the world comes into being through the Christ. Yet our unawareness does know the Christ. The Christ comes to what is the Christ's own, and the Christ's own people do not accept the Christ. But, all, but to all who receive the Christ, who believe in the Christ's name, the Christ gives power to become sons and daughters of God, who are born not of blood, or the will of the flesh, or of the will of man and woman, but of God. And the Christ becomes flesh and lives among us. And we see the Christ's glory, the glory as of the Creator's only offspring full of grace and truth. From the Christ's fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth come through Jesus the Christ. No one has ever seen the Creator. It is the Creator's only offspring, the Christ, who is close to the Creator's heart, who makes the Creator In the name of the Creator, 
the Redeemer, the Christ, and the Sustainer. At this time, I invite our ushers forward for this morning's offering. Oh God, our creator and our redeemer, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the gifts you have poured out upon us. May we now return these gifts to you so that they might be used to further the kingdom of God on earth until Christ comes in his final victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, I want to direct your attention to the back of the bulletin where you will find our prayer list. Are there others that we would like to lift up joys or concerns this morning? It is a joy to have Virginia and Roger and Betty with us this morning. Are there any others? Seeing none, let us go to God in prayer. Holy and loving God, We give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for bringing us back together after, after either a week apart or years apart. 
We give you thanks for this community and the support they provide one another. Oh God, in the midst of our thanks, we also recognize the hurt. We recognize the grief. We recognize the loss. We recognize the start of a holiday season without loved ones. Oh God, we also know that you are with us in our grief. You are with us in our sorrow. You are with us in our joy. For there is nothing that would ever separate us from you. Oh God, strengthen us. For strengthen us to be bold as we proclaim Christ as King. Strengthen us to be bold as we live into who Christ has called us to be. Strengthen us to be bold as we stand against injustice and oppression. Help us to be bold. For we have been called your children. We have been called beloved, and we have been created in your own image, O oh God. And as your beloved children, we pray together now the prayer that Jesus first taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. As we come to the close of our service this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together, Rejoice, the Lord is King, hymn number 715.
things in Christ. Christ the Lord is King. Amen.